So welcome Kim Lenga from Emerge Fitness to the SiriusNet podcast. You've been a ray of sunshine since the first minute you became a client of mine. So I just wanted to say first and foremost, I appreciate you. I see you and all the amazing things that you do. And, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm a fan. I'm a fan of how you conduct yourself. So tell me about, uh, tell me about Kim Lenga. Tell me about who you are. And then maybe give us, give the listening audience a little lead into Emerge Fitness. Well, absolutely. First of all, thank you, Steve. I appreciate um, being on here and getting the opportunity to share my story. And um, I'm not new to health and fitness. I actually fell in love at the age of 17. Um, That was my passion. The fire was lit. I began teaching fitness classes at the age of 17 out of a um, town hall with a tape recorder. And I would record my own music and I would um, teach these classes. Uh, And that was my passion. And truth be told, what I am doing today is what I've always wanted to do. However, I didn't do that, right? Like most people, we don't follow our passion, right? So I went kind of like a safe route and I got a corporate career. Um, I actually worked at General Motors for a year. And this is the power of um, kind of like looking at opportunities and um, going for it when they happen. I was working at General Motors right out of college and I'm teaching fitness classes at night. So I kept fitness as my side gig, right? And I was teaching classes and I was teaching um, a a class and a manager from Ford Motor Company Company and his wife always came to my classes and he approached me about, hey, do you want to come over to Ford? And I'm like, no, no, no. I kept saying no, right? Um, so one thing we can, one lesson learned is no doesn't always mean no. So he kept asking. I went on an interview really just to shut him up. And I'm like, okay. Um, they offered me a job and I made the switch. So um, I was in the corporate life. Um, fitness, again, always my side gig. And then I uh, got married, had my first son, and my priorities changed. So that health and fitness kind of fell a little bit further back, right? Because that's what happens when when you have kids and priorities change. And then I had my second son and um, he was born with congenital leg disorder. It's known as CFD. And basically what that meant is um, his femur bone, one of his femur bones grew at half the rate of his other bone. Well, now this was a game changer because now my husband and I are faced with amputation, or we could have our son go through several evasive limb lengthening surgeries to give him the ability to walk with his own two feet on the ground. Well, of course, we chose the latter because there was nothing else wrong with him and we wanted him to use his own two feet. Um, So long story long, um, fitness slid even farther back, but it was always my passion. Um, Fortunate for me, my husband was in a great position that allowed me to step away from my corporate job after 20 years. And I had to so um, focus solely on my family obligations. And um, and I did. So I lived my life in and out of hospital rooms, physical therapy rooms, doctor's appointments, and not me, my whole family, right? We, we it was just, it was a total game changer for all of us. Um, at that point, I jumped back into fitness and I thought, you know, and I know I can do this, right? Because I love it. And this is what I, I want to do. So I got back into it, but I was in my mid to late forties. And I discovered that it's a lot harder when you're older. So that's when I began starting, you know, to work on myself. I had my own transformation and I will show you that. And what happened out of that transformation is other people were noticing. It's like, how is this chick over 40 doing this, right? Because it's hard. And I began sharing what I was doing. Um, So I'll show you if I can real quick. My before and after. So that is my before and after. So for anybody listening at home or you're, you're not, you're listening and you can't see, um, I do have a photo there. And uh, the one on the left the before, that is actually when I started teaching fitness classes. So that was in about 2013. Um, I had that, that sleeveless shirt on thinking um, I was a fitness instructor and people knew I had muscles. Well, you couldn't see them. Um, I did. They were under there. <laughs> but I just had a lot of inflammation and body fat. So, you know, fast forward with focusing on food, nutrition, uh, supplementation, diet, and the right types of workouts, 
I transform. So it's not a, um, it's certainly not anything that's quick. And I will pride myself on saying that I help others get healthy. But if you're looking for like an overnight success story, I'm the wrong gal. So that's a long story long about my, my background and how I got started, but I love what I do. Yeah. And that's, you know, it's, great picture, you know, and, and because I think, as you mentioned, you know, you, you had to put yourself kind of, at least saw it, that you had to put yourself uh, a little bit behind the front of the line uh, mm -hmm. with your uh, child that had some special needs that needed to be taken care of. Mm -hmm. uh, also, when you hold a corporate job, you're probably salaried, which means you work as many hours it takes until a job is completed properly, right? Uh, yeah. and, and if you have to do that, then you're gonna also have to figure out what do I have to sacrifice then to do this? And that's that's a position that a lot of people find themselves mm -hmm. in. Uh, you know, they, they go into a job for security or to something else. And then all of a sudden we are a little, a little unrecognizable after 10 or 20 years of doing that sort of thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. So let's, let's talk about uh, Emerge Fitness then. So let's talk about, um, you know, today. So now you are an entrepreneur, 100%. Yep. You set your own schedule. Uh, you go as fast or slow as you want to go with your business. Uh, you've got life balance. You can do your business. You can go on vacation, you know, it, but there's a lot of structure that has to go into that for that to happen successfully. So let's talk about Emerge Fitness because, you know, how, how do you help people? Like if somebody's listening to this and they go, geez, I'm inspired by what I'm hearing by Kim, that's me. I took a job doing something to just help, uh, you know, keep expenses lower or whatever, but I'm not happy with how I feel physically. I would like to look a little differently. I know I've got muscle under there too, because I've seen it before. How would they rediscover finding those muscles with you, Kim? Great question. And actually, I can bounce it back to you and the power of networking and referrals, right? Um, you know, I, small, small home base business, right? So when I'm starting up, it really is about word of mouth and talking to people. Um, I was in a fitness facility, so I was teaching in real life and people saw me transforming. So they're like, what are you doing? And I got the ability, because I'm there, right, to share. It's like, this is what I'm doing. And I began coaching. It wasn't something I was thinking about doing. I was just going to be happy just teaching my fitness classes, um, you know, in studios for somebody else. But I just saw there are so many people struggling with the exact same um, life situations like I am, right? It's just like life is overwhelming. We're, we're consumed with all these different responsibilities. Um, I coach men and women. My husband has a great transformation story, but I resonate really well with women um, just because, I mean, I'll be 56. And so when we talk about hormones and menopause and all that stuff, well, yep, I can, I, I can talk about that, right? I can relate. So I became relatable with women and I was able to share with them what I was doing. Um, so well, that's, fast that's, forward. That's, that's really important too, because, um, you know, I can see it. I'm not going to be, I'm not blind to the idea of how people are marketed to on this planet, right? You know, take right. this pill and watch your whole body transform. Uh, do this and do that. And we all know that those are just marketing gimmicks, that there is no easy way to having great health. And you always talk about, A, it begins with what you put into your body. But then beyond that, um, knowing what your body wants, I think you help people figure out like through your DNA testing. Not, Absolutely. You know, we're all different, right? So this food pyramid, all this other stuff, throw it out the window. What's your body actually need, right? So you help people figure that out. And then you help them figure out what's the right nutrition. The physical stuff and the activity you shouldn't even bother with that if they don't do the first two, right? Absolutely. You know, and that's the hard part. You know, a lot of people, we, you know, you exercise, right? And then you exercise so you can have that whatever meal, right? And um, I would notice a lot of women in my classes doing the same things over and over and it's, they're not changing. And it's like, how do you fuel your body? And, and I was, thank you for bringing that up. I was introduced to DNA and um, that was three years ago. And that was a game changer for me and my clients, because now I'm able to pinpoint exactly, I'm not going to you know, tell them just do these things. I can customize a program based on their needs. 
And I am a firm believer in vitamins and supplementation. I wish I could say our nutrients, our soil, everything is great and we can get it from our food alone, but we can't. Um, so for me, being able to customize a program based on science that the um, prospect client would go in and they take a an assessment and they're going to put in their lifestyle, their history, family history, medical history, uh, their medications, um, their medical conditions, all of this stuff. And it will give them a list of um, suggested supplements for them. And, you know, this is something that's free of charge. And that gave me peace of mind because then I could tell people, hey, you can go and compare this list to what you're taking. Because maybe you're taking a lot of garbage you shouldn't be. And maybe you didn't know that this vitamin interacts with that medication that you're on. You don't know that, right? That's something I could never do. So when this was introduced to me, I thought, you know what, that gave me peace of mind. And I'll let people make up their own decisions. But um, I am a believer. You do need movement. And I love doing that. Exercise just lights me up. But I saw that body is made in the kitchen. Yeah, we saw that at, at the member breakfast. Uh, anybody that's listening that was at the member breakfast, uh, it was awesome seeing you do the boxing moves with everyone participating. There wasn't one person that that decided not to participate. You had the whole crowd up. They're but... afraid to. <laughs> They're afraid you're going to punch them if they didn't. <laughs> you know what? It's It's funny because talking like this to you about personal things and how I did that, this is um, probably more nerve wracking for me than getting up and, and doing that. It's just something that's come natural. And I guess because it, it has been done from the age of 17, I'm just, I don't know what gave me that bug at the age of 17 to get up and like move in front of people, but it did. And I love it. And you turn on music and I'm ready to go and certain songs, you know, inspire me. So well, it, it's you're, fun. You're yeah, you're incredibly gifted at that. I mean, all, all of the, the videos I've ever seen you in and seeing you in person, you really see somebody that you just really have all the right things going on, how you articulate ideas, uh, your positive projection. Um, you could be uh, doing this on a streaming channel somewhere with millions of people watching. I mean, you really have, I think, I think that kind of, yeah, I mean, really, um, you do. So let's, uh, let's transition then. Um, I, I think that we've got a relatively good idea about your business, and I'll be sure that all the links to access you are going to be in the description, uh, both the YouTube and the Spotify. So if you want to get a hold of Kim, don't hesitate. She's very non-judgmental, has wonderful ideas, and, uh, uh, and I'm sure you'll be able to help folks. But let's switch now to your, your SiriusNet experience. I always remember who the person is that introduces me to somebody and you were introduced to me by Christina Kafkakis, uh, mm -hmm. who's been a photographer in CirrusNet many, many years, and somebody yes. that I just spontaneously started a conversation with at a gas station one day, and she's been a client for since that entire time. So you visited a team in person, and I think that's when you were also at a fitness club and other things and at different classes going on. It was really, this is the neat thing that people don't always understand, is we've got a guy in our group, his name's Chuck Dodge. And Chuck is just, uh, he always is a great information person. He loves reading books, loves people. Yes. And he says, Steve, stop thinking about, uh, you know, things happening to you in life, but think about things happening for you in life. So the pandemic happened for us, for you and I, to break free of geographic limitations and to be able to do things that we had wanted to do, but geographically it wasn't possible to do. Like I had been wanting to live outside the country or at least in a warmer state for years. That couldn't be possible if I had to be in Michigan in person to run my team meetings. But now right. that we're on right. Zoom and everybody recognizes I can still do it this way just as well. You know, yes. So for you, your business also transitioned. When did the moment come to you that you, you thought, you know what, I should really take a look at networking and seeing seeing what's out there and then you joined uh, one of my teams and you've been a great member on one of my zoom groups for the last year my bright wednesday eight o'clock group so when did that moment come to you that you felt that the, the time had arrived well the time had arrived um because of the pandemic right because you now were offering um your networking meetings all via zoom um so that was one thing it's like okay that's something i can finagle um, the other thing is prior to the pandemic, so I was ahead of my time, 
Um, when I was teaching uh, fitness classes in real life, like many people, like myself, right, family obligations and commitments would get in the way. And I would find I show up for a class and not everybody did. Mm -hmm. And it was frustrating. Um, I also teach fitness vacation exchanges. So I go to Mexico and teach and I met a lot of clients and they would always say, I would love to do your classes. I wish I lived in Michigan. And I had the aha moment. This was in 2019. When did the pandemic happen? 20. Um, so it was a year before the pandemic. And I thought, you know what? I'm just going to try this. And I went virtual. And I started in Facebook, doing Facebook Live. And um, really, it was the word of mouth, right? So referrals and talking to people and sending out notes and say, hey, I have this idea. Do you want to try it? Um, and I started teaching my fitness classes um, Facebook Live. That's how it started. So because it allowed me to free up my time, so now I'm no longer strapped to facilities in their times, I was able to manipulate my own schedule and get in with network marketing because, again, it, my business is based on word of mouth, referrals, and people talking and sharing. Um, so when the world shut down, um, my nephew, he, he actually, he and his wife are both execs at Ford. They always did my um, Facebook live workouts. And um, my nephew said, Aunt Kim, are you ready? Because the world is going to shut down. Are you ready to open your platform up? So I, I worked like mad and I opened my platform up um, for two weeks that we were going to be closed during the pandemic. And I opened it up to everybody for free. And um you know, 12 weeks later, I was still doing it for free and decided, you know, what, I have to stop that. And and uh, so that's how it happened. I, I actually started virtually um, for myself. And because of that, it allowed me my own freedom, my own flexibility that I could join the group. And I had been dying. I was, what, six years? I was trying to get in with the group and every group and person or whatever meeting that you put me in, it was always at a time that I taught in yeah. a studio yeah. and it wouldn't work. Yeah. Yeah. So, and this is wonderful too, because we can take the networking to you and you can even do it when you're out of town, if you want to join a, on a Zoom meeting when you're not actually physically in Michigan. So your relationships won't get rusty. The relationships will stay relevant. I think that's really important. Um, last question that I have for you, and this is something that I, I hope is really providing a lot of value to um, the newer members, because one of the things that I tell my newer members now when I'm onboarding them to shortcut and ramp up their experience, one of the best things they can do is put the Sirius Nets on, uh, podcast uh, on alert on their Spotify so they get notified every time there's a new one, because the learning that we get uh, from the podcast, A, we get to hear and learn about interesting new businesses like yourself today, but the other thing that we get is um, your advice, because now you've been in CirrusNet for just a shade over a year. I always wait until I've got members that have been around for a year because I want you to have that year-long experience. What's the number one, the number one piece of advice that you would have for anyone brand new starting out on a CirrusNet team? Great question. Um, number one thing is learn um, learn how to do trust builder meetings and schedule those meeting appointments with other members. Um, I will tell you when I first signed on, I was just like kind of like looking and, and trying to figure out who would I refer so-and-so to and, you know, trying to make those pieces. Uh, when I actually made a trust builder meeting, set it up, and we sat down and I went through your training, right? Of trust, T-R-U-S-T. I write it down and we talk about it. And I physically make it a um, a, a goal. I said, okay, Steve, okay, tell me about your business. Who can I refer to? Yes. Who are you looking for? Yes. And I'm looking to help them because my goal is to help them. And, you know, hopefully they would be doing the same thing. Yeah. But we're looking for those synergies of, okay, Steve, you, you're looking for anybody. So I'll invite anybody. Um, and I will, I'm more, um, and, and I just did a post about this too. I'm more about helping other people because I find that um, it just comes back tenfold to you. Uh, people are going to trust you. I'm not in it just like I joined this networking meeting and I'm going to sit back and wait for somebody to come to me. It doesn't happen like that. It's all about um, 
learning how you can help your other members in that group grow. Yeah, and, and I think that that's people that have been around for that year. Trust builder meetings is usually one of the the highest recommendations people have. But this is the thing: it's having the right kinds of trust builder meetings. You know, it, it's always nice if you can grab somebody and 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 go to a sporting event or go fishing or whatever else. Yes, you're going to build camaraderie there. But unless you're willing to answer and ask the detailed questions, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and unless you're really able to get a sense of who that person is, like, who are you? Where did you come from? Are you from Michigan? What made you want to start your business? Like, because I know your journey, I know that you did it. You weren't delivered to this planet two years ago in the body and the spirit and everything you got right now, Kim. You had to work for it. Yeah. So knowing, knowing your story allows me to be enrolled in your journey. And when I'm enrolled in your journey, I want to be a helpful part of that journey. And I also celebrate your milestones along that journey. So that's what you get in trust builders that are done effectively, is you get that relatability. And it's very difficult to ask people to refer you and go to bat for you and go out of your, their way for you if you haven't even given somebody one-on-one -on -one time yet. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And and I will tell you, and this is just honest, my first couple of trust builders I had were probably epic fails, right? It was more just conversation and we're just chit-chatting and, la, la, and I walk out and I'm like, okay, who am I ever going to refer this guy to? Because I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know what he was looking for. And then when, when I found out, it's like, oh, you do that? No, you'd be looking for that person? Oh, I know that person. Um, so it's, yeah, it's a totally different mindset when I'm looking to like um, fill out that trust sheet yes. for them. Yeah, for sure. And the cool thing is, is that some people in the network, whether they've, you know, just been uh, purposefully applying the toolboxes that I teach, some people are really good at that, right? They pay attention to everything. And some people, there's so many moving parts to it um, that, you know, you you also have been, were uh, a pioneer in the very first CirrusNet pod where you got to learn the acronym of trust. And you also got to learn how to build trust with people by saying, hey, you're not my first rodeo. You'll be my like 12th trust builder in CirrusNet. And I've found that the people that allow me to play a little interview game with it and keep us on task have great trust builders with me. Would you mind if I kind of led the trust builder? And no one's going to say no. Are you kidding me? They're going to be grateful that you made that hour a discovery. Yes. Yes, exactly. Because we all we all have, we're all short on time and we all waste a lot of time doing stuff. You know, when we walk away, it's like, what did I get out of that? Correct. Um, so going back to the pod. Um my first visitation of the pod was kind of like, I'm listen, so anybody that ever goes to a pod and visits it for the first time, um, you may not be able to see what happens until you experience it. And I just thought, I'm just going to go for it because what do I have to lose? And I I have grown tenfold from that pod. I really have because um, we, we, we become friends, right? All of us in there and we support one another, but more importantly, they do give us feedback, right? Of like, okay, Kim, why don't you try it this way? Why don't you say it like this? Why don't you do that? And they encourage you. And all I can say, and this is true with lifestyle, health, fitness, um, you have to surround yourself with the right people that want to build you up. So if you have a goal of getting healthy, losing weight or whatever, don't be hanging out all the time with the people that aren't going to support that, right? I mean, a lot of times, like, what do you need to lose weight for? You look fine. Why do you Why do you need to eat healthy, Kim? You're fine. It's not about that. You want people that are going to support you and build you up. And that's what the pod did. They encouraged me every single week. And um, I had goals every week. And by God, I was going to get those goals done, right, before I got on that call with them. So um, it, it's uh, that was a great experience. Very great. Awesome. Yeah, I I'm so glad, you know, and that's a beautiful, and that's a perfect example right there, Kim, of a trust builder meeting. I had a trust builder with Denise after visiting what her team, uh, and our trust builder got my wheel spinning because I'm always thinking, how can I collaborate? Is there a way to collaborate with somebody where we can create more win-win situations? And Denise emerged as that person, and I yeah. think we're going to help even more people on the next pod. Um, Kim, thank you so much for uh, allowing me an opportunity to share you with the network. 
to share the good that you're doing, to also uh, talk about your CirrusNet experience as well, too. Uh, Kim Lenga, Emerge Fitness. You can find her on the CirrusNet search engine on the website. She's always ready for a conversation, not a salesperson at all, uh, just wants to provide you good value. Uh, like you do that bright Wednesday, 8 o'clock group. You're a huge, huge, huge heartbeat on that team. And uh, thanks again for being on the podcast today, Kim. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I pre appreciate the opportunity and I love being here. And I'm, I am going to shout this out. If anybody wants a free workout, because I like giving free, awesome. um, right? And just to see what my platform is, because we didn't show it, but my platform, I do have a streaming platform you don't have to be on Facebook. I've gotten it off Facebook, but you can um, work out with me either live or on demand. I talk about nutrition and everything in there. So if anybody wants, you know, a sample of that, I'm happy to send it to them. Yes. And we'll be sure that all of those things are linked. Uh, so if you're listening to this, you're watching on YouTube, check the description. All of the links that Kim was talking about are going to be there for you very conveniently. And Kim, again, thanks for being on the podcast. I learned a lot today.